Hi, I'm Lisa. Before I continue, please like and subscribe for more stories from my life. Let's dive into a chapter of my life that tested the boundaries of family and personal space. We had just moved into our first home, a cozy two-story house with a backyard big enough for a garden I'd always dreamed of. Mark and I were painting the guest room when he mentioned his mom, Janet, would be staying with us while her own house underwent renovations. It'll just be for a couple of months, he assured me. I nodded, happy to help, and looking forward to family bonding. The first week, Janet arrived with her suitcases and, unexpectedly, boxes of her own home decor. I thought I'd help brighten up the place, she exclaimed, unpacking vases and frames, replacing our modern simplicity with her elaborate Victorian style. I bit my lip, trying to appreciate her effort. I hope you don't mind, dear, but the living room really needs more warmth, Janet said, surveying the house like she was on a home makeover show. These curtains have got to go. Without waiting for a response, she pulled down our carefully chosen minimalist curtains. Mark seemed uneasy, but murmured, Mom knows best, right? His words stung a little, but I smiled, not wanting to start our new chapter with a conflict. Dinner times were another battlefield. I prided myself on my culinary skills, but Janet had something else in mind. This pasta is a bit too al dente, dear. Let me show you how it's done. She took over the kitchen the next night, redoing my menu and lecturing me on the merits of her cooking techniques. Maybe add a little more salt next time, Lisa. It lifts the flavors, Janet advised as she adjusted my seasoning without asking. Each suggestion chipped away at my confidence, making me second-guess my choices in my own kitchen. Cleaning became a point of contention, too. I found Janet rearranging the living room early one morning. Just moving things around a bit. You had the sofa all wrong for the flow of the room, she explained, pushing furniture across the floor. I liked it the way it was, I said, my voice barely a whisper. Oh, honey, trust me, this way is much better. You'll see. Janet didn't look up, her focus fixed on transforming my space into hers. By the end of the third week, our new home didn't feel like ours anymore. It felt like Janet's. Mark caught me staring blankly at the newly hung floral curtains in the living room that I hadn't chosen. You okay? He asked, wrapping an arm around my shoulder. It's just, I don't feel like I'm at home anymore, I confessed, feeling the weight of the situation. We'll talk to her, okay? It's our home, and it's important you feel that way too, Mark reassured me. But deep down, I wondered if Janet would ever really hear us, or if we'd just become guests in our own home. Another day, another critique, huh? Janet's voice cut through the morning quiet as I adjusted a new picture frame in the living room, a modest attempt to reclaim some of my space. You know, Lisa, you really should consider richer colors here. It would bring out the character of the room. I sighed, keeping my focus on the frame. I like it this way. It's more... us. Us? Oh, darling, you're young. You'll learn that a living room speaks to the soul of a home. This, she gestured dismissively, is barely whispering. Mark wandered in, coffee in hand, and paused to sense the tension. Maybe Lisa's right, Mom. We could try her ideas for a while. Janet laughed softly, a sound that seemed to echo off the walls. Mark, I've decorated more homes than you've lived years. Trust me, I know best. The day dragged on, and so did Janet's suggestions. By evening, she had rearranged the dining area much to my dismay. This table should face the window. You want to see the garden when you eat. It's feng shui, Janet explained, as if revealing the secrets of the universe. I liked it the other way. It felt more intimate. I tried to keep my tone light, hoping Mark would back me up. Intimacy is for bedrooms, Lisa. Dining should feel open, welcoming. Mark finally chimed in, his voice firm yet careful. Mom, maybe we can find a middle ground? Lisa and I chose that setup together. Middle ground? Janet paused, her hands on her hips. Look, when you two have as much experience in life as I do, then you can talk about middle grounds. Until then. That night, as we prepared for bed, I could feel the strain pulsing between us. Mark, can we please just talk about this? About what? My mom just trying to help? It's not helping, Mark. It's taking over. I don't feel like I belong in my own home anymore. He rubbed his temples, a sign of brewing frustration. Okay, okay. I'll speak to her tomorrow. It's our home, right? We make the rules. True to his word, 
Mark confronted Janet the next morning. Mom, we appreciate your help, but you have to let us make our own home. You can't keep changing everything. Oh, Mark. Janet's voice was a mix of amusement and disbelief. I'm just trying to prevent you from making mistakes. You'll see. One day you'll be grateful. But there are mistakes to make. We need to learn on our own. Isn't that what you always taught me? Learn by doing? Janet's face hardened, her eyes narrowing slightly. Yes, but that doesn't mean you reject help when it's right in front of you. I'm here now, and I know better. As the day waned, so did my hope for peace. Each of Janet's dismissals undercut our attempts to assert ourselves, leaving a trail of silenced protests and a growing fear that maybe, just maybe, we were losing more than just control over our home decor. Really, Janet? Did you have to throw those out? I was standing over the trash bin, holding the broken pieces of a ceramic plate, part of a set my grandmother had given me. They were chipped, Lisa. This house deserves better. But they were from my grandmother. They meant a lot to me. We're upgrading everything, dear. No room for old, broken things. Mark entered, sensing the heightened tension. What's going on here? Your mother threw out my grandmother's plates. She says they don't fit the new aesthetic she's creating. He looked from the broken pieces to Janet, his brow furrowing. Mom, you can't just throw out our things, especially not Lisa's. They're important to her. Janet scoffed. It's just stuff, Mark. When you're as old as I am, you'll understand that sometimes you need to let go of the old to make way for the new. But they're not yours to throw away. They're ours, and you should have asked us first. The argument spiraled quickly, with Janet defending her actions as improvements and Mark trying to mediate while supporting me. Improvement or not, you can't just decide to throw our things away, Janet. That's not your right. This is for the best. You'll see, once everything is in place, how much better it all looks. I don't care how it looks. You're disrespecting us, in our own home. My voice broke, the frustration and hurt overwhelming. Mark took a deep breath, his voice a mixture of anger and desperation. This can't go on, Mom. We tried to accommodate you, tried to be understanding, but this is too much. Janet's eyes narrowed, her voice cold. I am doing this for you, for both of you. You might not see it now, but I'm just trying to help. Help? By overriding our choices? By dismissing what we care about? That's not help. That's control. We need some rules. Clear boundaries. And if I don't agree? Janet challenged. Then maybe you shouldn't stay here. The room fell silent, the gravity of Mark's words hanging heavy in the air. Janet shook her head, disbelief and anger intermingling. You're choosing these... things over your own mother. It's not about the things, Janet. It's about respect. Something you've shown you have little of for our home, our choices. I am your mother. I deserve some say in how you live. Not like this. Not at the cost of our happiness. The confrontation left us all drained. Janet retreated to her room, the air thick with unspoken threats and regrets. Mark and I sat down, the broken pieces of ceramic a stark reminder of what we were risking if we didn't reclaim control of our lives and our home. Mom, we need to talk. Mark's voice carried a firmness I hadn't heard before as he confronted Janet in the living room. What now, Mark? Are you still on about those plates? It's more than the plates, Mom. It's about how you've been treating us, our home. It's not working, and we can't continue like this. Oh, so now I'm just a burden, is that it? Janet's tone was sharp, tinged with a mix of sarcasm and hurt. No one said that, Janet. But you have to respect our space, our decisions. You've crossed the line too many times. A line I crossed by helping? By trying to make this place better? Better according to who? You've disregarded our feelings, our choices. It's like we're living in your shadow in our own home. I am your mother, Mark. I thought I was doing what was best for you. Best for me or best according to you? Mark paused, his frustration evident. Listen, we found a few rental options for you. It's time you moved to a place of your own. You're kicking me out? Her voice broke slightly, disbelief coloring her words. We're setting boundaries, Mom. You need your space, and we need ours. I can't believe this. After everything I've done for you, this is how you repay me? Mom, this isn't about repayment. It's about respect and privacy, something we've been lacking. I was just trying to help. If I knew my help would get me thrown out, it's not about the help, Janet. It's how you've imposed it on us. We've tried to be patient, but you've made it impossible to feel at home here. 
You think finding a rental will fix everything? You think it's that easy to erase what's been done? It's not about erasing, Janet. It's about moving forward, creating a healthy environment for all of us. I suppose you've made up your mind. Her voice softened, a mix of resignation and lingering defiance. Fine. I'll look at these rentals, but don't expect me to go quietly into the night. We don't expect that, Mom. We just expect some understanding. Well, understanding seems to be in short supply around here. As Janet stormed off to her room, Mark and I exchanged a weary look. The decision wasn't easy, but necessary. In the silence that followed, we knew the hardest part was yet to come. Not just finding Janet a new place, but rebuilding the tranquility in our home that had been so disrupted. After all the boxes were gone, the house felt strangely quiet, didn't it? I remarked to Mark as we settled down in our living room, now restored to our original setup. It does, but it's a good quiet, a peaceful quiet. Mark glanced around, a soft smile spreading across his face. It feels like we're finally getting back to us. I never realized how much strain it was putting on us, not just our marriage, but on me, personally. I felt like I was losing a part of myself. I know, Lisa. I saw it too. It took me too long to see it, but I'm sorry for that. We should have set boundaries much earlier. It's okay. We learned from it, right? How to stand up for ourselves, for our marriage. Yeah, learning to say no, to set limits. It's something, huh? I guess we needed that push. We did, and honestly, I feel stronger now, more confident in us. We handled it together. Mark nodded, taking my hand. We did, and we'll handle whatever comes next in the same way, together. Do you think she understands why we had to do it? Why she needed to move out? I think so. She seemed to accept it, finally. But knowing Mom, it'll take time before she fully comes to terms with it. It's strange, though. I don't feel angry at her anymore. Just relieved. That's good, Lisa. Holding on to anger would just keep us tied to what happened. We've moved on. Yeah, moved on and grown. It's like pruning a plant. We had to cut back the overgrown parts to let it thrive. Exactly. And now we get to grow. Set down our roots in our own way. No more interference. We'll probably still have some cool moments with Janet going forward, though. Won't we? Probably. But we know how to handle it now. As long as we communicate and support each other, we can manage. And we have our peace back. Our sanctuary. Yes, our sanctuary. Ready to make new memories. Just us and no unsolicited home improvements. Definitely ready. And maybe, just maybe, we'll have a few less dramatic family gatherings. Let's hope. But no matter what comes, we've got this. Yeah, we've got this. Together. As we sat there reflecting on everything that had happened, I realized that this ordeal had not just tested us. It had fortified us. We were stronger, more united. The quiet of the house wasn't just absence of noise. It was the sound of our newfound strength and peace, a testament to our love and resilience. As the sun set outside, casting warm glows through the windows, I felt at home, truly at home, for the first time in months. Now that our story has reached its end, here's a question to ponder. Do you think setting firm boundaries with family members, even if it leads to uncomfortable situations, is crucial for maintaining healthy relationships? How would you handle a similar situation in your own home? Don't forget to share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Your insights really enrich our discussions here. If you enjoyed the story and our conversation, please like the video and consider subscribing for more content like this. Looking forward to seeing your responses.